I can't understand what you're saying, sir. Speak clearly. I, I can't understand. The Tower of Babel. One of the biggest construction projects ever undertaken, designed to reach the heavens. But the engineers couldn't finish the job. Halfway through, everybody working on the tower was stricken with the inability to understand what the other fellow was saying. They were all still talking, but they weren't communicating. That incident is supposed to have taken place in about 5000 BC, and we've been trying to understand one another ever since. But not too long ago, thanks to technology, there came along an amazing invention that actually made this problem worse. What is it? The desktop computer, of course. Everybody's got one of these things today, and we've all set about busily automating every task we can think of. On a project like this one, for example, the designers have automated their drawing production, and the structural engineers have automated their calculations for determining the size of members, and the HVAC people have automated their calculation for thermal performance. But they're still not really communicating. You see, we haven't improved the processes that connect these tasks together. And that's because the software packages that make this computer do its job are made by hundreds of different companies. And each software program has its own way of defining terms for the computer to understand. So they all talk to the computer, but they don't talk to each other. Which means the people who use them can't do a very good job of talking to one another either at least not with their data files and electronic drawings and documents. And why is that a problem? Well, on a big project like this office building, for example, our fractured information system, this one we're all using, results in information that's often incompatible, inconsistent, or redundant. You can imagine what something like that adds to the cost of something like this. When you come right down to it, we're all wasting a lot of time. For example, an architect does an initial design and passes it off to the structural and HVAC engineers. Now they all work in parallel, isolated, making changes as they see fit. When they get back together to try to integrate all of their decisions, well, the results are something of a mess. It takes iteration after iteration to finally get it right. But there's a move afoot to change all that, to make all of the software packages talk to each other to make them all operate from a single shared building model that provides a common language for defining a building project. Kind of a universal compatibility. It's being spearheaded by a company called Autodesk in collaboration with industry partners such as AT&T, HOK Architects, Honeywell, Carrier and Tishman Construction, to name a few. Uh, the Alliance was carefully put together there are more than a dozen companies, uh, we're all global players, and the important thing about the Alliance is that it represents a cross-section of companies that deal across the cycle of the building industry. People who design, people who engineer buildings, people who build, manage, maintain, and then recycle buildings. We're all partners in this. This is one of the most exciting things that I've seen happen in our industry in the 30 years that I've been in the industry. The design professionals, the manufacturers have come together and are putting in place an intelligent information system that is going to provide long-term benefits over the next decades. The challenge is uh, pulling the, the alliance together first, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, creating um, the, the industry library, beginning to, to create that, and at the same time working on uh, the concept of an open, uh, totally open standard, if you will, that's global. The biggest advantage that I see of this alliance over a uh, longer period of time really is uh, speed in construction. Speed in construction uh, results in uh, lower expenditures uh, for uh, owners, users and also an, an opportunity for an industry to work together uh, where it has uh, not uh, tied that well together in the past. We will now, with the interoperability solutions with the foundation classes, be able to look at objects in a drawing. 
The drawing will become the beginning of a database, if you will, of objects. Those objects relate to doors, windows, walls, those types of things that you see in a drawing. However, these objects will be interoperable. Once the definition is set, other industries or other disciplines, I should say, will be able to use those objects. Standard objects that can be interlinked across the various disciplines in the construction industry is a tremendous advantage for, for customers. I think probably the value added to, to, to my customers and, and everybody's customers are essentially um, reduction in, 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 in building the structure and, and some cost advantages in what it costs. And I think perhaps even the, the more important value to a customer is what, what I call life cycle costs. The idea is to have industry-wide definitions for every object we use to design, construct, and maintain buildings. And then to create industry standard definitions for the relationships between these objects. So when I create a door with my design software, your facilities management software automatically recognizes that it is a door. Plus, that door will have accumulated all the information defined about it as it was worked on by architects, engineers, specifiers, estimators, and builders. A truly intelligent business model. The data loss and confusion you've come to expect from translations and interpretations, that's all gone. What we're really talking about is interoperability, making things work together no matter who creates them, no matter who's involved. Now, if the success of this interoperability depends on agreement about terms and relationships, well, then it seems that getting the definitions right is critical. So who's going to create them? You are. Autodesk is working with its industrial partners to develop these definitions with the people who actually work in the architecture, engineering and construction industries. The definitions will result from analysis done with today's top companies, large and small. And since no one company will own the definitions, any software company can use them to develop their products, which means you get freedom to choose. You see, that's what interoperability really means to you. It's all the benefits of integration, but with the liberty to handpick any application from any vendor you want. The definitions will be called industry foundation classes, a terminology which may not mean much to you unless you're a computer programmer, but it's going to change the way you work. The Alliance and the IFC has a great opportunity to uh, globalize the, the market for energy efficiency. We have an opportunity here to make our tools available to architects who may be working in London or New York or L.A. and Hong Kong and actually working together. So that in the past, our, our methodologies and what we've shown and seen works best is that teams working together build good buildings, places where people want to work, where they're more productive, and they're more efficient, which is our mission. But this will allow them to work wherever they work now, but to work together to share information. And that, that is the exciting part about the Alliance. The Alliance is completely open. In fact, it's important that companies join the Alliance. This will only be a benefit to the industry if it becomes a standard. And the only way it will become a standard is if the industry participants join in the Alliance and provide the information that's needed to make it a valuable tool to the design community that's going to use it. The opportunity here with the industry class foundations is that the user community will decide whether or not it becomes a standard. And what I mean by that is how open it is. Um, I think the openness and the fact that anybody can add on to the base foundation classes within this interoperability idea and concept is key to having it become a standard. There's two keys, I think, to, to standardization. Um, globally, and that is certainly openness and open architecture, if you will, and certainly volume. People have to be able to use that uh, and compete uh, at a lower level. In order for this to be successful, we all have to be participants. The, the global uh, economy has now reached the design and construction industry. Autodesk is a global player. HOK is a global player. Every company in the alliance is a global player. As we move around the globe and work, we have to have a common set of standards, a common roadmap uh, with which to operate. If we don't have that, 
we really can't be competitive in global marketplace.